Six, and I am Ethan Van Skyver, your Uncle Evan. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm working on uh, the Cyber Frog uh, drawing. I think this is going to be the T-shirt, um, or one of the T-shirts. Something about um, you know doing a, a kind of superhero T-shirt, like a classic design, like you would have seen in the 1980s with uh, um, Spider-Man just kind of jumping at you and his logo behind him. Uh, so that's the idea behind this t-shirt. I think, you know, there are other designs that I do want to do, and I think there will be a lot of different um, Cyberfrog t-shirts eventually. Um, but this will be the first one. And I'm going to, I don't know, I might use it for other things. I'm just so excited about this character. Um, you know, it's been a long time since I've really got to pay attention to him. Uh, this was a comic book that I did in the 1990s uh, for Harris Comics and for Hall of Heroes. And, you know, I've, I have I sold the rights to him back then in order for, you know, a paycheck uh, to be able to, uh, to draw the character monthly. Um, but now the rights have reverted back to me. Actually, they reverted back to me a long time ago. Um, but I've been, you know, busy, I, I, you know, working as a kind of contract freelancer um, for Marvel and DC Comics. Um, now it's time to go out on my own and, um, and bring back this character again and a bunch of other things. I've got a lot of other ideas as well. But boy, do I love this guy. <laughs> I'm like so happy. I've never been so giddy about doing a comic book. Um, and the ideas are coming you know, pretty fast and furious uh, as I map out the story. All right, so we've got Cyberfrog's arm here. It's kind of coming at you. That's important. I mean, the, the whole idea behind this thing here and the uh, initial uh, impetus just for this one particular drawing was, okay, let's take this um, kind of uh, rectangular, almost square. I mean, it's not really... Uh, you know, like a 11 by 17, like I normally work on. This is 11 by 14. So let's take this and let's fit the entire character in the page, in the box. Those are the rules. Uh, none of him can be coming off the box and yet coming like out of the page, no full bleed. Um, and yet we want him to fill the page at the same time. So designing the shape of the character to be kind of energetic and coming at you um, and still, you know, basically fill the entire page and never leave the page. A lot of fun. Um, unlike uh, when I was doing this book before in the 1990s, I'm actually referencing frogs now. So I um, am using photo reference to kind of, I mean, he's still going to look like cyber frog, but I'm changing him up a little bit just to sort of uh, behave more like a frog, look more like a frog. Um, these kind of ear pads on the side of his head. He used to have these before, but they will be more modeled closely to uh, that of a green tree frog. Um, and his whole body type is going to be um, more frog-like. Look at the long, the super long legs, big, huge feet. Um, you know, it, it, it's great to just kind of look at pictures of frogs and how they curl up and sit and like kind of um, get ready to pounce uh, on their on insects. Uh, all these things are going to be um, uh, put into Cyberfrog now. I mean, he's still going to have kind of human characteristics because the hero himself was meant to be human. Uh, he was programmed uh, to behave um, like a human being, like an earthling uh, when he was sent here. So he still does watch TV. He likes human food. Um, he, you know, can speak uh, English, although... Uh, he has a, a very kind of uh, Brooklyn accent and, uh, you know, and the things that he, he says are kind of uh, very New Yorker because that's where he, he sort of grew up and uh, all that stuff. But uh, it's still, you want his mannerisms whenever possible um, to be, to be frog-like. Um, all right, so these right here are kind of lights that, that circle uh, his arms and his legs, uh, they represent kind of like a communication link to uh, Chel Sin, um, which is the the spacecraft that brought him to Earth. Uh, it's spelled K-J-E-L-L-S-I-N-N. -L -L -N. 
and uh, it sits in a swamp somewhere and just basically directs him and tells him where to go. So you see these lights are on, that just means um, he's being guided uh, to the next problem that he needs to solve. Um, yeah, and they kind of orbit the wristbands on his arm. Let's see here. So I want to do them over here. Um, I draw everything in uh, non-photo blue pencil uh, to start with and go over it uh, with a Copic Multiliner, as you can see, Copic Multiliner SP. SP just means that these are refillable. Um, they're the nicer version of this pen. They do make a cheaper version that's made of plastic. It, it's not refillable, it's disposable. Uh, this is the size 0.03. Um, it's the finest tip uh, that they make. And I recommend it. I mean, it's it's great for getting in there and doing detail. Now, if you're doing another style of artwork, if you're doing cartooning or manga or anything like that, um, you know, there are different sizes of uh, Copic Multiliner for you. And I do uh, use all of the sizes, but, um, you know, for this kind of a thing, I want Cyberfrog to always be so detailed, so fun to look at. You know, and with these kind of like long kind of bulbous frog fingers um, that can, I think they can sprout webbing. I think I'm going to do that. I've never drawn him swimming before, but of course he can swim. He's, he's an amphibian. So I'm going to have webbing between his toes and between his fingers uh, when he needs to swim. And I've already got an excuse for him to swim. I've thought of some story, uh, story problem. So, th I mean, I'm just, he's my superhero. He belongs to me. He's not Marvel's. He's not DC's. He's my guy. And I recommend it. I recommend you guys uh, who are thinking about becoming um, comic book creators, comic book artists, writers, have your own, have ownership, you know, over something. Create something for yourself. Um, and because you'll never have that sense of belonging anywhere else. I mean, so many, I created so many things for Green Lantern and for X-Men, for Flash, you know, I don't own them. I feel like I do, but I don't. I mean, in actual fact, uh, they belong to a corporation. Uh, so there's something kind of uh, exciting about, you know, owning something that you created. Very exciting. All right, so we wanna use the circle template to do his knuckles. He has um, four circles here, and then he's got secondary knuckles um, that are globes as well. It makes it makes drawing him take a little bit of time, uh, but I, I, you know, I've kept that one. Yeah, there are a couple aspects of his design um, since he was originally created uh, that I have kept true to. Um, yeah, and that is one of them. I will never change that. Get used to your pens. I mean, get used to drawing uh, clean lines without French curves or rollers. Get Make your hands steady. Um, you know, believe it or not, for me, caffeine helps. Uh, you know, you would think the caffeine would make you jittery, uh, but it doesn't for me. It relaxes. Uh, it gives me kind of this, you know, it gives you the caffeine kind of buzz that makes you attentive, which you need to be when you're uh, drawing a lot of detail, um, but it also steadies my hand um, so that I can do clean lines like that, you know, uh, it's a, I don't know, I, you know, it, it doesn't work as well without uh, a little bit of caffeine, have a little cup of coffee, or I like to have these kind of caffeine-free monster energy drinks that are terrible for me, I know, I know. I'm gonna try to quit that stuff during the process of this book and just drink black coffee. Um, that might be more healthy. All right, so his fingers kind of, I've changed this one thing. These used to be just straight. I've made them kind of flare out a little bit, his fingers, and then kind of uh, get bigger at the knuckles. Like so, and then just kind of meet in here, like that. And then his fingers are gonna be kind of flat now. 
I started looking at frogs and they've got these kind of suction cup shapes at the end of their fingertips that are in fact, I mean, they are suction cups. Frogs can climb glass and everything. Cyber frog can too. He's got the kind of wall crawling ability that Spider-Man has. Um, but yeah, it's because of the shape, this kind of cool suction cup shape at the end of their fingers. All right, so there's that. Now we've got this finger is uh, retreating off into the distance a little bit more. We're not gonna see as much of it. It's gonna look smaller. I'll even do this smaller. Okay. Like so. Yeah. All right, and then this finger's off to the side a little bit. Yeah, when I draw these blue lines, I, I don't stick to them. They're just indicators. I make my final decisions always um, with pen. And there, there's no reason to, um, uh, to spend all that much time uh, and energy uh, thinking about, you know, making these uh, lines, you know, your final choices. Your final choice, your final decision for everything always happens with the pen. And that, you know, that's advantageous. Because then you can just sort of, you know, a lot of these lines to me are just, are just thinking. They're just considering things. Um, they're making kind of first offers, first passes at what I'm going to end up doing. All right. I'll flare out this thumb. Yeah. Yeah, I just think his hands look cool. And he's cute too. I mean, he, there's a little, there's a little bit of cuteness to Cyber Frog. You know, he's just like, hey, how you doing? Um, you can see I, I've changed a little bit, but I mean the, um, the globes on the knuckles are still the same. This is um, the way he looked in the '90s, and we've kind of updated him to be a little more like lean and lanky, uh, longer. Uh, Longer extremities, longer uh, legs, slightly shorter arms, you know, like a frog. So there we go. Um, yeah, this is kind of all, of, all of his arms, his arms and his shoulders are made of metal. Um, but I've decided like instead of like polished steel for his arms here, they're going to be more kind of matte, like dark um, kind of matted steel. I don't know what you would call that. I would ask Andrea, but she's got headphones on in the next room, so she can't hear me. So, I mean, less reflective, like here, you can see like, look, oh, look, there's the underside of Cyberfrog's head reflected in the globe and his arm. These are mirrors. I mean, these are like polished mirror chrome. And then his arms are gonna be kind of brushed steel. Brushed, as I think the word I was looking for. Yeah. Can't wait to send this to. Uh, I think I might send this one to Kyle, Kyle Ritter. He'll he'll color it really quickly. I mean, it'll take him maybe a day and a half to turn this around. And this is the kind of thing that I just want the figure colored. I don't want a background. Maybe I'll have him add a background later if I want to turn this into a trading card. But yeah, I just pictured this against a black shirt or a white shirt. Just the figure brighten in color, and then the Cyber Frog logo, um, like behind him or something. That's the idea. I just want like a very like classic superhero t-shirt. Something that looks vintage. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, when you um, pledge to my Indiegogo for the Cyber Frog um, comic book campaign, you know, wearing one of these shirts is just like, hey, I, you know, I pledged 
and I'm a fan and I'm waiting for the book to come out now. And that's the kind of thing I want. I want you to like wear this like with pride. Uh, Cause this is going to be the coolest comic book this year. <laughs> it is, it is going to be the coolest comic book this year. Totally is. All right, that's a 15 minute video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, uh, there'll be more videos today, uh, more drawing videos, uh, but this is kind of a cyberpunk update. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon.